today, Dr. Zoon really has his wires crossed as he teaches you about soldering. First, you'll explore the various tools and techniques used to solder electronics. Then, it's time to build as Dr. Zoon shows you how to assemble the Pitsco Blinky Robot Kit. Hello, kids. Today, we are going to learn about soldering electronic components as we assemble a Pitsco Blinky Robot Kit. Soldering is a method of joining two metals, making an electrical connection between them. In most cases during this activity, wires are soldered to other wires, or wires are soldered to a circuit board. To do this, the two pieces of metal are heated up with a soldering pencil, and a low melting point alloy of tin and lead, or solder, is added at the point where the two metals meet. The solder melts and flows to the two metals. When the heat is taken away, the solder is attached to the metals, making a connection that carries electricity from one metal to the other. Let's take a look at the equipment we need for soldering. First, we need a soldering pencil, which is sometimes called a soldering iron or a soldering station. The soldering pencil has only one heat setting, while the soldering station can be adjusted to higher or lower temperatures as needed. If you are using a soldering pencil, a 25 to 30 watt pencil is best. Kids, whenever you use a soldering pencil, please be very careful. The tip and all metal parts of the tool are very hot and can burn your skin or the tabletop. We also need a device that holds our soldering pencil. This is called a soldering stand. Notice that the soldering station has a holder built into it. For soldering pencils, you can use a stand like this one or a simple stand like this. The point is that you need someplace safe to set down your soldering tool. Along with the soldering pencil, we need solder. Solder comes in a wire form like this. Most electronic solder is composed of 60% tin and 40% lead and melts at about 430 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 220 degrees Celsius. Solder also contains a resin that helps it flow freely. Many times, it is nice to have a vise that holds the electronic components you are soldering. This enables you to be free to work with both hands. Other tools you need are diagonal wire cutters, long nose pliers, and a wet sponge. Finally, we need safety glasses to protect our eyes while we are soldering. We are going to learn to solder by assembling this Pitsco Blinky robot kit. Our first job is to be sure that we have the parts or components that we need to assemble the Blinky. First, we have the instructions. The instructions with any electronic kit are very important as they tell us what all the components of the kit are and where they must be placed. The instructions may also specify the order of the steps for assembly and provide safety tips where necessary. This circular green part is the Blinky circuit board. This is where all the other parts are placed and soldered to make the Blinky circuit. Notice that one side of the circuit board has printing on it and the other side of the board has little round dots of metal with holes in the middle. These round metallic dots are known as soldering pads or metal connection points where wire leads from the components are soldered to the board making electrical connections. You should also notice that there are dark lines on the board as well. These are strips of copper metal that serve as electrical connections between soldering pads. These copper strips are known as traces. The traces and the components, after they are soldered in place, make up an electronic circuit, which performs a function such as blinking lights off and on. There should be a length of 6040 solder included, a slide switch, and a 9-volt battery clip. You need to supply a 9-volt battery that makes your blinky work after you finish the project. Also included are the following electronic components. Two transistors, four red LEDs, two 100 microfarad capacitors, two 330 ohm resistors, and two 10K or 10,000 ohm resistors. We have all the components of our kit, so let's put our safety glasses on and get to work. First, we attach the 9-volt battery snap to the circuit board. Looking on the side of the circuit board that has printing on it, 
We find the location for the 9 volt battery snap at the very bottom of the board. The wires from the battery snap go into the two holes in the rectangle that has 9 volt written below it. Notice to the left side of the rectangle is a plus sign and to the right side a minus sign. The plus sign is a symbol for positive in electronics and the minus sign is a symbol for negative. Place the red wire from the battery snap into the hole next to the positive or plus sign. Hold the red wire in place and place the black wire into the hole next to the negative or minus sign. Hold both wires in place and turn the circuit board over. Bend the wires down to about a 45 degree angle to hold them in place. Before soldering these wires to the circuit board, let's put the circuit board into our vise. After we have the board in a position where we can comfortably solder, we can prepare our soldering pencil. The soldering pencil is ready to solder when it is plugged in and hot. After it is hot, we touch the end of the solder to the tip of the pencil, which melts some solder onto the tip. We wipe the excess solder off the tip by pulling it backwards across the wet sponge. This process is known as tinning and should leave the tip of the soldering pencil shiny and ready to solder. The proper method to solder electronic components is to place the tip of the soldering pencil against both the wire lead and the solder pad. This heats up these metal surfaces and prepares them for the application of the solder. Hold the tip on both surfaces for a couple of seconds and then touch the end of the solder to the joint. The solder should flow to both the wire lead and to the solder pad. If the solder does not flow, continue to hold the tip of the pencil to the joint until the solder flows. You will probably notice some vapors when you work with the solder. Try to avoid breathing in those vapors. After the solder flows, pull the pencil tip and solder back from the joint and inspect your soldering job. A good solder joint looks like this, with the solder slightly heaped up to a point around the wire lead in the shape of a volcano. If you did not heat the wire lead or solder pad enough, you may get a cold solder joint, which is not a good electrical connection. You can sometimes easily recognize a cold solder joint because it has a large puddle of solder on the solder pad and does not have the volcano shape. Each time you make a solder joint, be sure the solder flows easily to both metal parts. We are ready to add our red LEDs to the circuit board. An LED is a light emitting diode. These produce a small amount of light when electricity passes through them in the right direction. LEDs have two leads and one is longer than the other. Also note that the case of the LED has one flat side on its base. Both the length of the leads and the flat side of the LED help us determine how the LED should be placed on the circuit board. The location of LED 1 is here, in the upper left hand portion of the circuit board. Notice that next to the holes are positive and negative signs again. The short lead of the LED goes into the negative hole and the long lead of the LED goes into the positive hole. Insert the leads and slide the LED down until it is about five or six millimeters or about one quarter inch from the circuit board. You can double check to be sure you have the LED in the correct position by checking to see that the flat side of the LED corresponds to the flat side of the circle on the circuit board. After we are sure that the LED is inserted correctly, we can bend the leads on the bottom of the circuit board to about 45 degrees to hold the LED in place. Repeat the process for the remaining three LEDs, finding their locations, inserting the LEDs with the long lead in the positive position, double checking that the flat side of the LED corresponds to the flat side of the circle on the circuit board and bending the leads after the LEDs are fully inserted. After the four LEDs are in place, we turn the circuit board over, place it in the vise, and solder the leads of the LEDs to the circuit board. Remember that each time we solder, we watch for the solder to flow evenly in the joint to both the lead and the solder pad. After we have soldered all the leads of the LEDs, we remove the excess length of the leads, cutting them just above the solder joint with our diagonal wire cutters.
Next, we add our 330 ohm resistors to the circuit. Resistors resist the flow of electricity, reducing the voltage. Typically, resistors have color bands around them that indicate the amount of resistance that they possess. This resistance is measured in ohms. The 330 ohm resistors have orange, orange, and brown stripes in that order. There may also be another stripe following these three stripes. This additional stripe represents the tolerance rating for the resistor. After we have located both of the 330 ohm resistors, we look for locations R3 and R4 on the circuit board. Because resistors are not polarized, in other words, they don't have a positive or negative direction, it makes no difference which leads of the resistors go into the two holes at each resistor location. To insert the resistor leads into position on the circuit board, we must bend them at 90 degree angles. To do this without damaging the resistor, we use our pair of long nose pliers. Hold one of the leads with the pliers, making sure the body of the resistor is against the pliers. Bend the lead 90 degrees. Bend the other lead in the same manner and in the same direction. This is what the resistor should look like before we place it on the circuit board. We insert the leads of this resistor in the R3 location and slide the resistor leads down until the resistor is against the circuit board. After it is in position, we bend the leads on the back side of the board about 45 degrees to hold the resistor in place. Repeat the process with the other 330 ohm resistor, placing it in the R4 location. Let's solder these two resistors into place. The other two resistors for locations R1 and R2 are 10K or 10,000 ohm resistors. The color bands on these two resistors are brown, black, and orange. We bend the leads of these resistors and insert them into locations R1 and R2 on the circuit board, bending the leads to keep them in place. Again, these resistors should be inserted until they are against the circuit board. We solder these leads, cut off the excess, and move on to adding transistors to our circuit. Transistors act as electronic switches in our circuit. They allow electricity to flow or not flow, depending upon the amount of voltage in the circuit at the time. Each transistor has three leads and a flat side on its case. This flat side corresponds with the flat side of the circle at transistor locations Q1 and Q2. To insert the first transistor into the Q1 position, we bend the two outer leads forward slightly toward the flat side and also spread them slightly farther apart. We also bend the middle lead of the transistor back slightly away from the flat side. Check to be sure the flat side of the transistor matches up with the flat side of the Q1 circle and then insert the three transistor leads into the three holes at the Q1 location. Push the transistor and leads down to about five or six millimeters, about one quarter inch, away from the circuit board. Bend the leads on the back of the board to hold the transistor in place. Repeat the process with the second transistor, inserting it with the flat sides corresponding into location Q2. Solder these leads and cut them off just above the solder joints. Next, we add capacitors to our circuit. Capacitors store electrons and then release them, causing a delay in the circuit. The capacitors we are using in this circuit are polarized. They have a positive side and a negative side. They have a positive or negative sign on the side next to the lead. Be sure that the negative lead of the capacitor is inserted into the negative hole at location C1. Slide the capacitor down to about five or six millimeters, about one quarter inch, from the board. Bend the leads to hold the capacitor in place. Repeat the process with the second capacitor at location C2, and then solder the leads, cut them, and check for cold solder joints. The last piece to add to the circuit board is the switch. This switch connects or disconnects 
the circuit board from the battery, turning the circuit on or off. The switch location is the three holes just above the word power on the circuit board. To the left and right of the switch holes are the words off and on. Slide the switch leads into the three holes and place the board into the vise so that the board is held almost vertically with the switch towards the top. Make sure the switch is fully inserted and then solder the three leads to the circuit board. We are almost finished building our blinky board. All we need now is power. Let's find a 9 volt battery and see how our project works. This battery produces electricity by a chemical reaction of different materials inside the battery. This particular battery produces 9 volts of electricity and should provide adequate power for our circuit. We simply push the battery snap onto the battery terminals and now we are ready to throw the switch and see what happens. It works! The LEDs are blinking off and on, just like they are supposed to. If your blinky does not work, remove the battery and check for cold solder joints. If you see a suspect joint, you can simply touch the tip of the soldering pencil to the joint, remelting the solder and attaching it more securely to the lead and the solder pad. Also check for excess solder that may have caused contact between two close leads or traces. This is known as a solder bridge. To remove a solder bridge, simply melt the solder at one side or the other of the bridge, breaking the bridge. You can also check to be sure that all the electronic parts are in their correct locations and that they are oriented correctly. After you have checked out all the possibilities, reconnect the battery and try the circuit again. Kids, before we go, I want to remind you of proper soldering procedures. First, be sure to wear safety glasses or goggles when soldering. Second, avoid breathing the vapors produced during the soldering process. Third, be careful with the soldering pencil. It is very hot and can burn you. Fourth, be sure to have a holder for your soldering pencil. Fifth, be sure that your soldering pencil is plugged in and has been warmed up before you begin to solder. Sixth, be sure to keep your soldering pencil clean, wiping it on the wet sponge occasionally. Seventh, check each solder joint for good solder flow so you have no cold solder joints. Eighth, do not add too much solder as it can cause bridges across leads or traces. Ninth, in general, solder smaller components first and then move on to larger components. Kids, I hope you've enjoyed learning how to solder. You may want to convert your blinky circuit board into a button to wear or make it into a desk accessory that you can proudly display. Until next time, this is Dr. Zoon saying, See you real soon.